right. Thank God. We had tonight's service, y'all. Bible study time. How y'all doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. Doing good here, huh? <laughs> Don't you stand strong? Yes, sir. Amen. We know first lady doing good over there. Got to do my fit on. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. We thank God for his grace and mercy. We're going to go ahead and get into this thing tonight. Okay. And we're looking at these questions. I'm going to make Wednesday night more of a Bible study session. Uh -huh. We're going to do some reading and we're going to get into some questions here. Oh, we're going to take it from the top with an easy one. What was the takeoff scripture for a good steward of your faith? I didn't bring my trivia music tonight. <laughs> I need my little phone up here and press that button like we used to in Bible study. Oh, yeah. Doing internet days, doing COVID. Yeah. Be online. Uh -huh. Yes. We can begin in the book of Luke. Somewhere in chapter 12. You getting hot yet? Somewhere in chapter 12? All right. Let's turn there. Luke chapter 12, verses 42 and 43. Somebody would be so nice to read that for us. Luke 12, 42 and 43. And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward, whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household, to give him their portion of meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Amen. It's important, especially in these days, to be faithful. And to seek God in such a way to stay in his word to gain wisdom. Mm -hmm. Because we know wisdom is in the word of God. Yeah. Uh, especially in the book of Proverbs. You know, there's a lot of wisdom there coming from Solomon, who was the wisest man of all time. He released a lot of wisdom in that book. Yeah. A good idea to look it over. Mm -hmm. I remember back in the days we read a chapter per day. Uh -huh. well, right on through it. Pretty easy little schedule to keep. The book of Proverbs. Amen. All right. We're going to stay in chapter 12 for our next question. From Luke chapter 12, what is Jesus telling us to be doing in verse 35 and 36? What is he telling us to be doing there? That your loins be girded about and your lights burning. What did it? Go ahead. Ye yourselves like unto men that wait for the Lord when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Yes. So what does that mean to us? To always be ready. Always being prayed up, staying, uh, say, fasting, worshiping, meditating day and night, uh -huh. keeping your heart and your mind clean, honest. We'll be ready for when God comes back. Amen. It's a gold star answer. Anybody got a silver star? <laughs> Amen. From the Amplified Version, verse 35, be dressed and ready for active service and keep your lamps continuously burning. Mm -hmm. Always be ready for action. Every day we want to live as though Jesus could come back any moment. Because the fact of the matter is, he can. Trumpets are blowing today. Things all over the world that sound like trumpets. And there's a lot of signs in the, in the skies today. We was looking at YouTube and we saw all kinds of stuff in the sky. Some stuff looked like UFO, UFOs. Some looked like angels. Uh, so that they uh, they claim they saw Jesus in the sky over in our, uh, the Middle East and 200 uh, Arabian guys uh, trying to think of what they what they serve over there the Arabian guys but 200 of them uh, came to Jesus that's what they say they, they saw an image of Jesus in the sky. So that works for them. Mm -hmm. And the good news is we need warriors over there. 
yeah. in Iran and Iraq and those areas, most Muslim, those Muslim areas. Oh yeah. And they need to come to Jesus. Because these guys are very serious about their faith. Mm -hmm. And it's unfortunate to see that kind of zeal. Mm -hmm. Amen. For stuff that won't quite get you to heaven. Like yes, amen. Yeah. I'm gonna stay there in Luke chapter 12 for just a moment more. And the Lord said, verse 42, Who then is that faithful and wise steward, whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household to give them their portion of meat in due season? Mm -hmm. Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Of a truth, I say unto you, that he will make him ruler over all that he has. Mm -hmm. But in if that servant say in his heart, in his heart, in his heart, my Lord delays his coming and shall begin to beat the manservants and maidens and to eat and drink and to be what? Drunken. Drunken. The Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him and at an hour when he is not aware and will cut him asunder and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. Yes. Looking at these mm -hmm. scriptures, uh, we are to see that at, at no time can we mm -hmm. begin to behave as though we're unbelievers. Mm -hmm. One of the things about coming to Jesus is there's an adjustment, there's a change that's expected. Mm -hmm. And you, you can be saved today and tomorrow, folks looking at you like you should be walking on water. There's immediately an expectation of you as when you identify as a Christian, there's an expectation for you to also speak and behave and do things that Christians do right away. Amen. Most folk don't understand that it takes a while. We have to get on that road to maturity and travel on it for a while uh -huh. before we begin to see any 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 inkling of, uh -huh. of maturity in Christianity. It takes a while. Uh -huh. Because we're in darkness, we, we learn many bad habits and many bad behaviors. Uh -huh. It takes a while for those things to go away. Yeah. We find that when you come to Jesus, he immediately takes some things away. Yeah. And the Bible talks about God teaching our hands to war. Uh -huh. In the Old Testament, the Bible talks about the Israelites. And God came in and cleaned up the area for them. Uh -huh. He always left some enemies out there. Mm -hmm. And the purpose was that they may keep their weapons sharp yeah. and be always training and be ready for battle. See, God don't want to take all the enemies away because then we get comfortable. And then we stop growing. We stop developing. And we stop utilizing the skills and abilities that God has placed in us. Yeah. We can get comfortable. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. We, we, can, we can bag up and not read as much as we would normally read and okay. meditate in the scripture. Now, this thing that we're working on right now, meditating in the word day and night, is very important. Yeah. See, there's a certain time in our life when certain things come forth we have to jump on this bandwagon. Uh -huh. It's okay, why do I need to do that? That seems like heavy duty stuff. Uh -huh. Everybody ain't trying to read the Bible day and night. Uh -huh. Everybody ain't trying to meditate in it. Yeah. See, there's a special reward there in, in uh, Psalms chapter 1, verse 2 and 3. Let's look at that again tonight. Uh -huh. uh, because we do want to love Jesus more in 2024 indeed. And it's like one step at a time. Uh -huh. There's certain things that we should be doing at certain times, Ariana. We can't just do it all at once. Mm -hmm. We can't just raise our hands up and get the big dump. Mm -hmm. There's no instantaneous, amen, maturity. Yeah. It's important we get mature, maturity a little bit at a time, one step at a time. And we go from one place at a time. Mm -hmm. But when we get there, we need to make sure we can retain what's happening. Mm -hmm. all right, in this season, we want to press into it. Mm -hmm. Because trust me, believe me when I say, people are going to be behind you in those seats and in front of you in those seats. and and we're going to need you, mm -hmm. amen, to be looking around saying, okay, how can I help them and, and make sure they scored away? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We want to be able to keep people and be able to love them and bless them. Amen. Let's take a look here at this thing. We'll pick it up in verse 2, Psalm chapter 1. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate how often? Day and night. You don't play around. But there's something you got to have in order to do this. 
His delight. You gotta have that delight, that that happiness, that cheerfulness, that joy about getting in this thing. Because you can find yourself, okay, I'm just gonna read a couple of scriptures today. You can say that. But once you get in it, you feel something. Uh -huh. And God begin to pull you in a little deeper. Uh -huh. Then you oh, I got more time. Let me go ahead and get another one here. Yeah. You begin to meditate on that thing because God is doing something in you. Uh -huh. You want to get you to another place where you're beginning to make him first, put him first before all things. Uh -huh. Because this is what he wants. Yes. He wants us to love him more than anything that, that there is to be loved on this earth. Uh -huh. Place him first. Yes. And when it comes to the order of things, uh -huh. Number one has to be God. Yeah. Number two should be our marriage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. And number three should be our job. Mm -hmm. These things are very important to livelihood. Yes. But we got to have the right order. Mm -hmm. I mean, we got to get them in sync. Yeah. But his delight, delight, delight is in the law of the Lord. Mm -hmm. We got to have that, that hunger for it. Yeah. And in this law, does he meditate day and night? Now, David not just saying this. Mm -hmm. He man, he, he given us a big promise here in verse three, mm -hmm. huge promise. Mm -hmm. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth, whatsoever he doeth, shall prosper. Now we gotta believe God for that. But he's asking for us to do a little something to get that. Stay in the word. Pick a time during the day to meditate on something. Pick a time in the afternoon to meditate on something. There's things we can set in place because we, we got our schedules already set. Now all of a sudden we're trying to make an adjustment. What can I do to be able to meditate in this thing day and night? What can I change? And we looked at our work schedule. We saw we got two breaks and we got a lunch. We can fit some time in there if we choose to do so. And when we get off, we get home, we'll generally have about five to seven hours before we go to sleep. We get home at five. We may stay up to 10. We may. That's kind of pushing it for some. Amen. Depending on what time we got to rise up in the morning. Yes. Nine o'clock may be a better time to go to sleep. Eight o'clock would be a good time to start hitting the word. But we got some things that come in there and cause us to not have such a desire to get in the word. It could be a television show. It could be some game we're playing or something. Uh, it could be just a habit that we have that we need to adjust. So I got to get some time here with God every night. But we can do it. This is our year. Things are going to happen. Things are already happening. Be prepared. God want us to step it up. Just a notch. One step at a time. We don't want to try to get it all at once. Just a little here and there. Even Proverbs, looking at those chapters. One for each day. Whatever day it is. Days of 10, chapter 10, and so on, etc. But it's a blessing to be able to have, to take time to put something in place that will keep us going. Because that's what has to be done. That's okay. At this time, I'm going to be doing this. One thing I love about being in the, in, the, in the Army, it leaves you doing things a certain way. You could be in there for four years. But when you come out, you, you learn some things, even you don't realize until you really get out, that you do things a certain way. The stuff you keep, little things, your wallet, your keys, and all those things, you put them in one place all the time. And every time you look for them, you go right to that one spot, and there it is. The organizational skills is something you learn quickly in the military. They begin with basic training. First thing you do is learn how to fix that bump. Tighten them corners up. Because uh -huh. if they're not tight, if they're not right, uh -huh. you got to answer to somebody. Uh -huh. Drill sergeant said. Yeah. You got those drawers, you got to have them socks, t shirts, yeah. everything lined up a certain way. All your personal items go up in the first two drawers. If it's somewhere else, guess what? Yeah. But I hope you don't get inspected that day. Yeah. <laughs> you, you're going to be sore when you get done pu pushing up. 
One, two, three. But it's a blessing to be in such an environment to get discipline because we need it. That's right. Such as it is and set up a way to get in the Word and be consistent. Consistency must have discipline. I won't exist. We got to have discipline. Amen. You see change in your life like never before. Number three. What is the definition of stewardship? Mm -hmm. Stewardship. The job of supervising or taking care of something, such as an organization or property. Yes, in other definitions. Say again. Being good stewards of your home, teaching children to love God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. This is so important. Mm -hmm. Teaching the children to love God. Yes. In this world today, the school is actually teaching things other than education. They have a desire to teach our kids stuff that's ungodly. They want to defile the mind, defile the yeah. minds of the children already. As parents, we've got to really oversee that. Mm -hmm. And instill the proper things in the, in, our, in the hearts of our children. Yeah. As the Bible tells us in the book of Deuteronomy. Mm -hmm. Amen. Chapter 6 mm -hmm. tells us how to do this thing yeah. the way God wants to be done. Mm -hmm. Our children are so precious. Mm -hmm. And these devil worshipers. We know about the uh, after school children club that's still out there floating around. We don't hear about it and all of a sudden it's another hundred that's been placed in different places. Uh, about a year or so ago we talked about it and there was five states that were saying yes it can happen. We looked at it again more recently and then it was in Memphis and they fighting because people doing the right thing they said hey we don't want that here come to find out according to the legal system there's nothing you can do about it because the legal system is set up for everyone mm -hmm. no one is exempt and it's a good good thing I heard on 700 Club the other, the other night that they're beginning to have after school Bible study as well yeah, yeah. they're taking the children and they're teaching them things yeah. of God right. to offset that which is a major blessing yeah. stewardship the job of supervising or taking care of something, such as an organization or property. We have to be good stewards of our soul as well. Uh, the Bible says, in your patience, possess your soul. Keep that soul, because the enemy is after our soul, first of all. You know about Apostle Paul? He said, I fought a good fight. He's a good, very good example. And Jesus told him that he was going to be going over all over the place, ministering to kings and, and leaders and, and to the Gentiles. And he done those things. And in his German, German, German <laughs> journey, the end of his journey was in Rome. He had to go see Caesar. He, he was talking to one of the guys, one of the leaders, and they was judging him and thing. He said, I appeal to Caesar. And he said, okay, after Caesar you go. And that's when he was able to get on the boat and sail on over there. But while he was there, he began to realize that, okay, I'm about to lose this battle here. I talked to some kings, and I, I fought a good fight, he said. Yeah. Fighting a good fight is something that we have to get down to a science every yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. we got to fight that good fight. And it's not against people. Right. We saw in Ephesians chapter 6, mm -hmm. the good fight is against the devil. Yeah, right. Principalities and powers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. We need to look at those categories and say, oh, okay. This is why I'm having these tests, these trials, these tribulations, because the enemy is after me. But James said, what did James say about that? Count it all joy. He said, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Count it all joy. Why would I count it all joy? God is up to something. If you're being tempted, tests, going through trials and tribulations, God is trying to get you to go to another, a new place with him. Right. Because if we're not tested, we won't know where we are. Right. 
Well, so I'm good. I'm good. Oh, you know what? You got a review today. Come on in. We're going to do a quiz. Mm -hmm. And then that quiz, we're looking hard. It's mm -hmm. tough. Yeah. Oh, man, ain't we, did we study this stuff? <laughs> you know, and all of a sudden, we're struggling with that, with that quiz. Mm -hmm. Then we begin to realize something. I wasn't paying close enough attention. Yeah. Because these trials, they come suddenly, these temptations. That's why he said, if you, when you fall, mm -hmm. it comes quickly, just jump right in front of you. Uh -huh. Then you got to deal with it. And how we deal with that will determine where we are. Yes. It's important we realize where we are. When we constantly in the word, God will allow a test, mm -hmm. a temptation, a trial, some tribulation, some persecution. Oh, yeah. to help us move forward. Because these are the things that toughen us up and help us to realize that there's more than is required of us. And trust me, God wants us to be the best we could be for him. Amen. Uncle Sam even said, be all you could be in the army. Mm -hmm. Yes, be all you could be. Mm -hmm. How much more do the Lord want us to be all we could be? Right. He wants us to be people of excellence. Uh -huh. People that are dedicated, disciplined, and determined to know his will and to please him all the days of our life. Yeah. He deserved it. Amen. He deserved the honor and the glory. Amen. Let's give it to him. Yeah. Amen, Jackie? Amen. Let's give it to him. What do the Bible say we'll say by? Grace. Mm -hmm. I got anything to add to that? Grace through faith. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 2. Let's read that one. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. It's a busy chapter there. A lot of meat in there. Mm -hmm. that bone. Mm -hmm. Let's read 8 and 9, somebody. Mm -hmm. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, least any man should boast. Amen. God does it. It's a gift from heaven. Mm -hmm. He releases grace. Mm -hmm. You may have got a definition of the word grace. Um, let's see. God's riches. Uh-huh. Say that one more time, loud and clear. God's riches at Christ's expense. God's riches at Christ's expense. Mm -hmm. And a more formal definition mm -hmm. is God's unmerited or unearned mm -hmm. favor. Yes. He gives us this grace mm -hmm. which allows us to come to him uh -huh. in this manner. Mm -hmm. yeah. He gives us the ability to be in a place to hear mm -hmm. the word. Yes. And once we believe the word, Faith is generated. Because mm -hmm. faith coming how? By hearing. By hearing. And hearing yeah. by the word of God. Once we hear it, we got a choice to make. Yeah. We believe it. Now faith is being generated in us. Yeah. And we come to a place of conviction. Mm -hmm. And then we begin to repent. For we are his workmanship. Mm -hmm. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Mm -hmm. Those good works are expected which God has before ordained mm -hmm. that we should walk in them. Again, God already knows those are the hills. Mm -hmm. He has already set a time and a place for us to come to him. Amen. Yeah. Let's look at Apostle Paul. Mm -hmm. What was he doing before Jesus showed up? Terrorizing and killing the Christians. Terrorizing, persecuting, mm -hmm. leading them to death, mm -hmm. to be stoned, mm -hmm. and all kind of torture. But God knew it. And God was working on his heart all the while, while he was being a Pharisee. He was very zealous. He was learning all kinds of things about the law. Mm -hmm. And in his mind, in his heart, he thought he was doing the right thing. But see, even before the foundation of the world, God had a certain time when he was going to appear. He knew at some point Paul was going to be on his way to Damascus. Mm -hmm. yeah. Meanwhile, he was gaining all this knowledge and skills and ability yeah. that God could take it and use it for the kingdom of God. Yes. But there was a certain time mm -hmm. when God showed up. Right. And things happened right there. Let's take a look at Acts chapter 26. 
read about his experience in Acts chapter 9. Let's look over to 26. Now here's Paul. He was told that he was going to minister to kings. And one of these kings' name was Agrippa. Uh -huh. And in this setting, he's talking to King Agrippa. And he's breaking out some more details that is not laid out in Acts chapter 9. Mm -hmm. But it's talking about the same situation. 26, we'll pick it up in uh, verse 13. Mm -hmm. At midday, O king, I saw in the way light from heaven above the brightness of the sun, mm -hmm. shining round about me, and them which journeyed with me. Mm -hmm. Being that there was an eclipse just recently, and we got all this fresh knowledge about not looking up in the sky when that thing is bright. Yeah. I learned some things about that. I wasn't even going to bother with the eclipse. <laughs> but I saw it on the news. Everybody was getting all excited. I said, let me go out here and see what this thing looking like. Uh -huh. yeah. I goes outside and I look up and it was about to get there. We had Jack on the phone. Mm -hmm. And I looked up there and I just peeped at it. Whoa, that's bright. Mm -hmm. I just quickly turned away. I had no idea it was going to actually be that bright. And looking at this right here with uh, with King Agrippa here, with Paul. At, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun, shining round about me, the brightness, uh -huh. and them which journeyed with me. You know, when Paul was done with all this, he walked away with no, no sight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If the brightness is above that of the sun, mm -hmm. that's some serious brightness to be looking at. Uh -huh. And when we were all fallen to the earth, they all fell to the earth, uh -huh. I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the bricks. Uh -huh. Now I'm going to ask a question. In the days of Paul, had he ever seen Jesus? In his walk. Now look at this again. Jesus asking a question to Paul, a uh, Saul of Tarsus at this time, before he became Paul. Why persecutest thou me? I want to point out here that Paul had never seen Jesus. But Jesus is saying, Why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Or you can't gain any effort, you can't be productive. It's like kicking the wind. Mm -hmm. You're hurting yourself. Yes. The pricks are sharp. Mm -hmm. Every time you kick it, you feel the pain. Mm -hmm. Want to take note that everyone that has Jesus in them, mm -hmm. when somebody's fighting against you, they're not fighting against you, they're fighting against Christ in you. Right. And this is what was happening here. Mm -hmm. And the Lord will fight our battles. Mm -hmm. Think about this. Look at this situation here. And you can see a little, a little closer why God fight our battles. Mm -hmm. Because the battle is not yours. It is the Lord's. Mm -hmm. Because they're fighting against the Lord in you. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Amen. And Jesus Amen. is making it very clear. Mm -hmm. You come against my people, you come against me. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. Had to keep that in mind during our, our persecution days. Mm -hmm. As we go into the sports store. And getting our boxing gloves. And we would tell them, hey, meet me over in the park at 8 o'clock. <laughs> We're going to have it out. See who's the boss. Mm -hmm. And I said, who art thou, Lord? Mm -hmm. And he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. Mm -hmm. See, even in the midst of what Paul was doing, he always thought he was doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. He does some serious stuff. Mm -hmm. But the Lord already had his time planned it out. As the Lord told Jeremiah, mm -hmm. before you was formed, where? In the mother's womb. In the mother's womb. I what? Mm -hmm. You already knew what's going on. Mm -hmm. He knew where you was going to be yeah. every moment of your life. Yeah. He already knew it. Right. The Bible says, he know, uprising and our down sitting. Mm -hmm. He know our thoughts are far off. Mm -hmm. He knew everything about us. Yeah. He knew when we was going to say yes to him. Mm -hmm. He knew the day we was going to repent. He already knew it. He knows what's going to happen in the future. Mm -hmm. Past, present, and future. It's already done in the eyes of God. But rise and stand upon thy feet, 
for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. There's always a purpose when we're dealing with Jesus. He show up. He ain't showing up for nothing. To make thee a minister. To make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in the which I appear unto thee. He wanted to make Paul a minister. Mm -hmm. And he later came to him and made it clear that he was not just a minister, but he was also an apostle. Mm -hmm. And he says, if we look at the book of Galatians, we'll find that when Paul started to greet the Galatians, when he wrote this letter, he was saying, I, I Paul, an apostle called by God. And he, very, he was very specific. Uh -huh. He said, not of man. Mm -hmm. Because it's God that releases those positions. Yeah. And it make it clear to you what you're called to be. Yeah. So much so that when you go around, he began to put it in the heart of people. Uh -huh. And they begin to tell you, yes. you're called to be a whatever. Mm -hmm. Some people just say you're called to preach. Uh -huh. But many people say you call called to pastor church, you call called to this or that. God does it. He confirms his word. Mm -hmm. He confirms what he placed in you. Yes. When you dream a dream, uh -huh. thank God for it. But he always confirmed it through many people. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God for that. Amen. To make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in the which I appear unto thee. Mm -hmm. Deliver thee from the people and from the Gentiles. Yeah. Uh huh. Unto whom now I send thee. He getting sent to the Gentiles now. For what purpose? Mm -hmm. Verse 18. Right. Very specific. We want to make sure we catch this. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to what? Light. And from the power of who? Satan. Unto God. Mm -hmm. That they may receive Amen. forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Now here's Paul getting specific instructions as to what Christ want him to do. See, this is the standard right here. Yes. For everyone that God calls mm -hmm. to minister, mm -hmm. this is the job description. Mm -hmm. And we go look at it and say, okay, man, I need to see God in such a way where I'm able to be used by him to do this thing. Yes. But even this thing is a certain time for it. Mm -hmm. For everything, there's a time and a season. Yes. And God starts us out in such a way where it's able to take building blocks. Mm -hmm. Amen. Not the whole big scoop at one time. For our good. 18 again. To open their eyes. Why? Because before we come to Jesus, we're in dark. We look at Ephesians chapter 2 and we saw what we were yes. before we came to Jesus. Uh -huh. Dead man walking. Yep. We got to be quick and made alive. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light. Mm -hmm. That's the job. To turn them from darkness. We have to make them understand hey, you're in darkness. I want you to make it to heaven. Let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. And from the power of Satan unto God. The power of Satan is real stuff. Mm -hmm. We looked at Ephesians chapter 6 and we saw who we wrestled against. Mm -hmm. And it's not people. Right. Everyone that comes to Jesus, amen, is under the power. Mm -hmm. I mean, everyone before coming to Jesus mm -hmm. is under the power of Satan. Mm -hmm. When we come to Jesus, we're in the power of God. Yes. We got to understand that. When we come to this earth, where we are. Yes. And when we come to Jesus, where we are. Mm -hmm. Now we need to understand this also that the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, the children, if one of the parents is saved, mm -hmm. just one of them, the children are clean. Yes. That's important. Mm -hmm. But if neither parent is saved, the children are unclean. Mm -hmm. We need to look at that. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 is very important. Just take one parent to be saved in the church and business. They're sanctified uh -huh. according to the scripture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. I want to point this out because this job description is extremely important. What we are about, what we want to do. We want to acknowledge Jesus Lord and do the things that he called us to do. And that's, that's it. That's the key. That's the bread and butter right there. Question number five. What is grace? We looked at that. We said it's God's unmerited favor. God's riches at what? 
Christ's expense. Number six, in the parable of the ten virgins, how many were wise and how many were foolish? Five was wise and five was foolish. Man, we got that down pat. And look at Matthew chapter 25. We'll look at verses 1 through 13. We'll take a peek at them. And I'm asking another question while we're getting there. What caused the five foolish to not be able to enter in? They didn't have fuel in their lamps. They mm -hmm. was not there when the master showed up. Yes. Simply put, they weren't ready. They, weren't, they didn't stay dressed and ready. <laughs> they missed the boat. Uh -huh. Let's take a look at that one. Let's read Matthew 25, 13, somebody. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Yes. It's important for us to always be ready. Amen. Always looking for the Lord to come. Yes. We can get to a place where we're not looking anymore. We're just living life and having a good time. Amen. I went to college, got a good job, done, done these things, got all the stuff I wanted. Got the guy that had the farm, right? Had the, uh, the barns. I mean, he didn't have... He didn't have, he had so much stuff to go in him. He said, man, I, I can't get all my stuff in these barns. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to go ahead and tear them down and build bigger. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to say to my soul, soul, take thine ease. Mm -hmm. And we can get there. Mm -hmm. If we're not focused, if we don't have a plan, amen, to keep on that road to maturity, mm -hmm. we can get there and get comfortable. Right. Well, see, he had a visitor that came to speak to him mm -hmm. and said, thou fool. Your soul is required tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Now who's going to get all that stuff you just stored away? Mm -hmm. And the Bible says be rich toward God. Right. Above all things. Yeah. You're going to be rich. Be first rich toward God. Amen. Right. We need his direction to know how to deal with these things uh -huh. that we get. So our life is not yeah. about having all these things mm -hmm. and riches. Mm -hmm. It's about following the will of God. Right. Knowing the will of God. Staying dressed and being ready always. We don't know when our Lord does come. We don't know when he's coming, Aaron. He can come any day, any moment. All this stuff going on, I'm, I'm listening, I'm looking and I'm listening. I'm thinking, okay, something's definitely happening here. The seven trumpets are going to blow. And it seems like some are blowing already. You had to confirm that yourself by looking at some of the YouTube videos. Because these sounds sound like a trumpet to me. And it's all over the world. I could see if it was in one isolated place or one isolated country. But all over the world, hearing the trumpet? And it's so easy to read this thing and say, you know what? What happened in my lifetime? Yeah. <laughs> yes, it can. Yes, it can. Yes, it can. Because we're definitely in the days of lot right now. Yes, we are. We all know that, without a doubt. Okay. Uh -huh. And Jesus began to say, so shall it be in the day of the Son of Man. When you see these things happen, yeah. be ye also ready. No I mean, what can we do to stay ready? Mm -hmm. This one is loaded. Read your word. Mm -hmm. Read your Bible. Read mm -hmm. your Bible. Mm -hmm. yeah. Psalms. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's yeah. a little something we talked about a while back there with the read your Bible thing. Yeah. Psalms chapter one we looked at already. We saw the verse 2 and 3, got a big promise. Yeah. If we meditate in it, how often? Day and night. Day and night. Yeah. John 15 give us some more information about how to stay ready. Uh -huh. Let's pick it up in verse 1, John chapter 15. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nothing else can satisfy my heart. John chapter 15. John chapter 15. Let's take a read, verses 1, 2, three. One, two and 3. Oh, 1, 2, and 3. I am the vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he, purge, he purges it, mm -hmm. that it may bring forth more fruit. 
Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Yes, there's a cleansing there. The word has these certain ingredients, these certain things that it does for us. And cleaning us up is one of them. We're constantly being cleansed by the word. And we saw in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, that the word is quick and powerful alive. Mm -hmm. As we read it, it becomes, uh, meditate in it, it becomes a part of us. Mm -hmm. And we're becoming more and more Christ-like. Yeah. The word does so much for us. It heals us, mm -hmm. it strengthens us, and all these things. And there's so many different reasons why we have to make the, the word of God the apple of our eyes. Because it's so important. Uh -huh. So important. <coughs> Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. Mm -hmm. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. Mm -hmm. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do what? Nothing. Nothing. We can't make it without Jesus. You gotta have Jesus. I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burnt. If you abide in me, and my words, my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. That's a major promise right there. We want our promise answered? Let's obey this thing. Obedience brings some things home. The Bible says that God gives his spirit mm -hmm. to those that obey him. Right. Obedience can make some things happen. Mm -hmm. We look at it and say, oh, this is what God wants? Okay, I'm doing that. Yes. He blessed you for it mm -hmm. in a major way. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we see that as one way, amen, to stay ready, mm -hmm. to stay in that word, stay in Christ, stay close to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Another way, John 8, 30 through 32. Somebody go there and read that one for us. John chapter 8. Verses 32 and 32. Jesus spake these words, many believed on him. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Mm -hmm. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. That's a very common scripture, yes? Mm -hmm. Let's take a good look at it. And he spoke unto the, he spoke on these words, many many believed on him as he spoke it. Then said Jesus to those Jews who believed on him, if you do what? Continue. Continue. Then are you my disciples indeed. That's one of the qualifications of being an actual disciple. You'll be one that continues in the word. If we begin to look at this thing and meditate in it day and night, we ought not want to be a disciple. We, ought, we become a disciple indeed. Quick, fast, and in a hurry. We discipline ourselves to do it. And you shall know the truth, because there's something special about being a disciple. Meditate in that thing, you're going to know the truth. And then when you know the truth, something happens. And the truth shall do what? Yes. We begin this process of meditating in the word on a regular basis. We get free from this area. Yes. We continue to get free from that area. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, we're speeding up. Yes. Kind of remind me of the uh, Christmas mm -hmm. show there. Mm -hmm. Put one foot in front of the other. Oh. And soon you'll be walking out the door. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> I don't know why this kind of thing just kind of stick with me. Uh -huh. Amen. Heat miles and cold miles and those guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But this is what happens. It's a process. One step at a time. We get ourselves there. We're walking out the door before we know it. We're on our way. And you shall know the truth and the truth, the word of God. Understanding it, having the wisdom of it, shall make you free. Free indeed. Another big promise there. We look at it, obey it, expect it. We know we're obeying the word. We can expect things to happen. Expect freedom. Expect more peace, more joy, more love. Expect to bear more fruit. Because this is what he wants for us. He has it for us. Let's look at 2 Timothy. We're getting close to the winding down time here. 2 Timothy chapter 4, we mentioned this, we'll go over it. 
2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 through 8. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Here's Paul when he realized his time was just about up. The one beautiful thing about staying close to God, these things begin every significant thing in your life. God tend to show it to you ahead of time. Things that's going to really affect your emotions one way or the other. He'll reveal these things. And here's Paul. He already know what's going to come to pass. Okay, I've done my job here. For I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. He knew it. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Three things that we should always remember. We got to do what Paul did. He set the standard here. I fought a good fight. We got to know what that fight is. We got to start resisting the devil on a regular basis. And we'll be winning already. I have finished my course. All the way through, we got to keep fighting a good fight. All the way through. I've kept the faith. Because at the end of the day, the enemy won our faith. By any means necessary. He want to take our faith away. And complacency is one of those ways. But when you lock this thing in and say, I will read, I will stay in this word, man. I'm going to meditate in it. I'm going to look up words. I'm going to speak this thing at the enemy. When he come my way, I'm going to just rebuke him, bind him, and speak the word at him. He got to go. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, uh -huh, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all of them also that love is appearing. Mm -hmm. We can expect to receive a crown of righteousness. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. There's always a reward. There's always a blessing for those efforts. Thank God. Yes. Let's go to Luke chapter 9. Here's another one. I mean Luke chapter 9, yes. We pick up verse 23. Winding down. We have 10 minutes. The book of Luke, chapter 9. And here's Jesus. The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders. We pick up verse 22. And the chief priests and scribes and be slain and be raised from the be raised the third day. Mm -hmm. The third day is coming back again. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And he said unto them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross often. Daily. Daily, Jesus. And this is our song. Lead me, guide me. Daily, Jesus. And this is what we want. We want him to lead us and guide us Daily. Take up this cross. Take up this cross daily and follow me. This is what Jesus is saying. Take up that cross. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save him. But what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world and do what? Lose himself or be a castaway. Mm -hmm. Gaining all these things and not being focused on Jesus mm -hmm. is not good. Mm -hmm. It's no good. Mm -hmm. Somebody said, I brought nothing into this world. Yeah, right. And surely I'm taking nothing out. Right. I know Job said, naked came out into this world. Mm -hmm. And naked shall I return hither. Mm -hmm. Going back the same where I came. Empty hands. I mean, there was also a man called Alexander the Great. Mm -hmm. he, had, he had some principles there. Mm -hmm. And I get into those again because it's very important. Mm -hmm. But one of the things he told his guys that when he died, mm -hmm. I want you to, when you put me in there, in the coffin, just parade me down through the town yeah. and let my hands hang outside of the coffin. Yeah. And mm -hmm. let the people see that. Mm -hmm. So they can realize that I'm not bringing none of these riches away with me. Even Alexander the Great knew that. Mm -hmm. 
We didn't bring, you know, ain't nothing coming out of the world with us. So we had to consider some things. When we're seeking out the riches and all these things, it ain't coming with us. We gotta dig in, make sure our souls are heading to the right, right place. So what is a man advantage if he gained the whole world and lose himself or be a cast be cast away? For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed. When he shall come in his own glory, and in his Father's, and of the holy angels. Yes. Thank you, Lord. So those are some ways, there's many, uh, to ensure we're ready, and that we stay ready. And if we do these things, we will be ready. Real, ready to go. In the parable of the talents, mm -hmm. what does Jesus expect of us? In that parable, we're familiar with it. There's something very specific. Mm -hmm. That is just to multiply. Multiply. Mm -hmm. to multiply what He has given us, beginning with our faith. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that God gives us the measure of faith, mm -hmm. and have an expectation. For us to increase that faith. Mm -hmm. So we have to look at some of the ways to do that. Mm -hmm. Again, it's the word. Mm -hmm. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. Getting that faith where it needs to be. Yeah. We keep adding to our faith as we saw. Mm -hmm. In the book of Second Peter chapter 1. Mm -hmm. We keep adding to our faith. Mm -hmm. We'll be made that we would never fall. That's right. Keep adding to it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Gold star answer. What happened to the one with one talent? He was cast into out of darkness. What happened? What happened to him? He didn't multiply. He buried it. He was a slothful and wicked servant. Yes. He was busy looking at the master. Okay, I know what kind of person you are. <laughs> you see, instead of doing father instructions, yeah. he worried about what kind of person the master was. Mm -hmm. While he busy worrying about that, he wasn't doing what he was supposed to be doing. He wasn't multiplying. Yeah. He wasn't taking that talent and, and, and trading it and getting usury from it, yeah. get, gaining interest. Yeah. He could have made it if he had just done what the one with five talents mm -hmm. and the one with two talents done, right? Yeah. All that to do, he would have made it. It's important that we are able to know what we're supposed to be doing and to get it done. Amen. Amen. Let's see if I can make it to number 11 here. Amen. Are we given any faith to begin with? Yes. What did the Bible say about that? Every man is given the measure. Romans chapter 12, verse 3, somebody. Romans chapter 12, verse 3. So we know where that's at in the Bible. Mm -hmm. yeah. For I say, through the grace given unto me, mm -hmm. to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, soberly. According, to, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. The measure. The measure. Thank God for that measure. Thank him for guiding us into a place where we're hungry for the word. Amen. So we can take that measure and increase it. And keep hearing it. And keep meditating. Yes. Keep looking for the word. Yes. In everything that we do. Uh -huh. Speak it. Mm -hmm. Hear it. Yes. Repeat it. Mm -hmm. And speak it against the enemy. Yes. This is what God wants for us. Amen. That we may grow thereby. And become strengthened and nourished. Mm -hmm. And ready for every good work. That the Lord has for us. Let's stand. As we close. Father, we just thank you tonight for your word. Let the word of Lord be rooted and grounded in us. Let it be in our hearts. Let the word strengthen us, O oh God. 
Let your word direct us in this life. And grant us a hunger, Lord, and a thirst like never before to come to the full knowledge of you in our wisdom and spiritual understanding. We may be ready in that day, O oh God. Help us to place you first always. Let there be nothing ever before you. Help us to look upon you, Lord, for our marriages and for our jobs. Help us to keep our priorities, O oh Lord, straight in the line as you would have us to. Thank you, Father. And as we go from this place, let your blessing be upon everyone here. Strengthen, O oh God. Touch, heal, and deliver. And grant wisdom, Lord. Grant peace. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let the angels go before us and make our way safe and peaceful. Let the angels surround every home and everything that we possess, oh God, that the enemy is not able to get in. Thank you for it, Lord. For loving us so much. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.